perfect. Um, I'll just grab it, drop it over on another image, and you'll get an idea of how that works. You can grab the pick tool and um, move that disembodied head around uh, to our liking. So a little creepy, but uh, kind of shows the basic idea of how one can quickly extract a, uh, an element of one photo and move it to another photo. Uh, while I'm changing here, I'll say that my, uh, my favorite thing to do there with that is to actually extract people from photos and then uh, in doing video work, when I'm using Video Studio Pro, I, I love actually being able to take um, the, uh, a, a person from, from one photo, uh, from a photo, be able to overlay that person and actually allow them to pan and zoom out from the photo. It's a very documentary style. It's a very powerful style of being able to show um, what, um, uh, what it, um, you know, the character that you're trying to focus on and so on. That's a, that's a whole other webinar. Uh, that's not the scope of today's, but I just wanted to give that a little, as a little highlight. That automated tool is pretty powerful for being able to do that. One last thing to show you, this, um, this whole idea of editing photos is uh, very, very useful. Um, in the full editor, again, we've got all the tools that we have in Express Lab, so uh, we happen to have the Makeover Toolkit right over here. I can grab the, the Blemish tool, and oddly enough, that Blemish tool is actually pretty useful for all kinds of blemishes. Now, I usually don't think of boats as blemishes, but in this case, let's harden this up a little bit so you can see the effect. Uh, and I can just go ahead and click in the water, and it uh, is basically removing those boats for me. So this is a tool, again, that you've got available to you in, um, in uh, various versions of the program. It's been around for a while. Kind of neat. Uh, you don't actually see Emerald Bay up by Lake Tahoe with so few boats on it on a regular basis, um, but it's nice to see it that way. Let's look at one of the uh, features of this that that is really going to be pretty hard to remove, and that's this tree right here. So to, to do this, uh, to, to remove this tree, I'm going to use a new X3 uh, uh, tool called the Smart Carver. The Smart Carver basically changes the photo by asymmetrically stretching it and squishing it, and what we're going to do is give this algorithm a hint of what we want the outcome to be. We will just say by using a couple of the, the brushes here what we want to remove. So I use the red tool to say go ahead and remove this thing. So let's just paint over this tree. Um, the other thing that is true, so again the rule is you paint as, as close to the object you want to have removed as possible so as not to remove everything that you you know, that, that you, you don't want to have removed, uh, but also paint, paint over it completely if at all possible. So I'll just go down and do that. Now you notice that this object actually intersects the peninsula over there. It intersects the, uh, the island over in this little area, and it also, uh, at, once we get down there, it intersects the mainland as well. There's also boats and other stuff around it in the water, uh, but, um, you know, all We've been removing those boats, but right now let's uh, let's just leave them alone in this particular cut. And let's see. Again, I'll just quickly paint so you can see the effect, and then you can play with this um, uh, in the in the in the product yourself to see how it works. Um, it, there's another case here where it's intersecting with a, another tree makes it all that much harder. You can imagine what it would take to remove this thing manually, so let's, uh, let's hope that, that our uh, more automated tool uh, gives, gives us a, a reasonable result with this. Um, I just go ahead and paint again. I paint completely on, the, on, on what it is I want to remove. If I leave any interior parts of it, those parts will be left in the end. Um, we decided to do it that way because that's more powerful for you, um, but um, basically just, you know, wanted, wanted to remind you to paint it out completely. The green brush actually protects areas to, uh, that, that you don't want to have modified. In this photo, I'm fine. Go ahead and do whatever you need to do to make it, uh, make that tree go away. We have auto contract horizontally, which will take the width of the photo and squish it 
and, uh, and, and take this out by squishing it that way. Uh, and we also have auto contract vertically. If I was to auto contract vertically this, it would need to record, it would need to squish it very dramatically. It would make huge changes to it. Not the right way to do it. But anyway, let's go ahead and contract it horizontally and see what the effect is. The results um, generally uh, are, there we go, uh, pretty reasonable. Uh, it's, it, again, you knowing that that tree was there prior, probably realized that, oh, there you can see where the changes were made. But again, with a little bit of makeup tool, uh, I can actually kind of go and clean out the boats that I had been deleting and some of the other changes. And while if you're standing there comparing it to the actual island or the actual land over here or the actual set of trees below you, you will notice that there are changes. Um, it's, uh, it's pretty effective at removing that. And again, um, doesn't work on all types of images, doesn't work on every situation. It's one of the tools that we have for doing this sort of a, an edit. So that is the main things I wanted to show you in the, the program here. Um, there's other things you can do with stretching and, uh, and squishing and just play with those. Again, we'll post some, some tutorials that show other things you can do with that tool to um, uh, do a, additional sorts of uh, very powerful things. Let me go ahead and switch back here to uh, a PowerPoint presentation briefly. And then we'll get ready for a quick Q&A. Again, I see that we're basically almost out of time, but um, we'll just grab a few questions uh, very quickly here. Final thing I want to say on the, um, on the photography front is I want to encourage you as a photographer to get out and try things, not only in the software, but focus on that camera as well. No matter what kind of camera you have, you'd have the ability to go and make changes to things like the aperture settings and the shutter settings and the ISO settings on that camera. You get out of the program modes, get out of the little runny guy or the little photo of the little uh, that has the little mountain scene on it or the big P or whatever your camera has on it. Get into those places where you can set the aperture yourself and start playing with it. Remember, a small depth of field comes from a small f-stop number. That's the biggest opening you can get, the most light going in, and the focus uh, range or distance will get smaller and smaller no matter what those numbers are. So if you can get to 5.6 or, or, or 3.5 or 2.8 or, or 1.4, whatever your camera allows you to get to, the smallest number, try some things that are kind of close up, focus in on something tightly and watch what happens to the black background. The background will just blur out and it's a wonderful, wonderful effect. Shutter priority, same thing. If you want to stop the action, cool. You can stop that runner in mid-stride by going to a very fast shutter speed, but play with the motion blur that you get by going to a longer shutter speed. Try shooting fireworks at night with a two-second exposure or a four-second exposure. Just see what happens. It just changes the dynamic of the photo so dramatically. And also water. Water is great with motion in it. If you can get to a point where you see a waterfall, get in there with a couple of second shot, it's just a wonderful, wonderful effect that it makes. Finally, if you're doing a lot of night photography especially, you're going to see some cases where the camera's not going to be able to get to where you want to go, so you're going to want to pop up your, F, your ISO a little bit. The ISO uh, uh, basically is one of the traditional film terminologies that you can get in traditional film. Um, if you went from a 100 to a 400, you'd notice a grain difference. If you went to a 1200 film, you would notice a pretty dramatic grain difference. It's the same thing in your digital camera, but instead of grain, you're really coming up with digital noise. That's those little flecks and pixels that, that just are kind of stray and kind of strange in your picture. So you can get rid of those with some filters that we provide you in the program. Uh, the digital noise removal tool takes a long time, but it uh, is also uh, fantastic for cleaning up those, uh, those, those issues that you have in your uh, photo. So uh, one last uh, thing to put on the screen here. Uh, free trial available. I just wanted to let you know about that. It's fairly large. It includes both the Photo Pro application and the Project Creator program, something we didn't have a time to look at today. Uh, it's about uh, 
500 megabytes. It's going to take some time to download. Be patient. Go ahead and let it just let it download. Go ahead and let it install. It's going to take some time. Again, you know, do it over, uh, you know, over dinner or whatever it is. But give it a little bit of time, and that uh, that demo will get installed and go ahead and run uh, for you. So